followed by the show intro, like 10 seconds. Hello, welcome to Adventures in Small Business, a collaboration between the United States Small Business Administration Hawaii District Office and its resource partners. Uh, my name is Dennis Kwok. I'm the director of the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific. Um, we have a very special guest today. Uh, his name is James Alden. And uh, he is special because uh, he's not only, uh, we only not only saw him as a student, but he's actually progressed into a graduate and of the Boost to Business program, and now a small business owner, a successful one at that. So, uh, James, thanks for having us, uh, having uh, coming on the show and uh, being here. Dennis, thanks for having yeah. me. Yeah. So, um, sure. you know, uh, before each of the sh um, every show, I like to ask uh, some personal questions. So, um, and I know the story of uh, your past, but uh, maybe you can share with the audience how you came, how you went into the military, and um, you know what that journey was for you. Well. I how far back do you want me to go? Well, I can go back to uh, up into my junior year in high school when the last thing I was going to do is join the military. Yeah. Uh, so I was a, an athlete in high school. I played multiple sports. And then I uh, had a chance to go play football at the uh, United States Military Academy at West Point. So uh, living in Atlanta, I thought going to New England area, up to New York to get an education would be uh, quite, uh, quite an adventure. Mm -hmm. So... I signed up, not really knowing what the Army was about, mm -hmm. but knowing that I wanted to play Division I football. Oh. Did you uh, come from a military family? I did not. My, uh, my father was a fireman for 29 years oh, in, wow. in Atlanta, and my mother was a, a career teacher. Oh, wow, okay. So, yeah, so I had an educator in the house, and as well as a, uh, you know... A, 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 disciplinarian? Yeah, dis both, both were disciplinarians, right. uh, but both, uh, both loved all of us very much. I had two older brothers, so I, I was the youngest. Okay. And your experiences at West Point, uh, how was that? I mean, uh, was it overall? And I know that you don't want to, you know, uh, talk about uh, smear your alma mater, but no, not yeah, at all. But, no, yeah. yeah, no, it was great. It was, uh, it it allowed an eighteen-year-old to kind of figure out um, what was important mm -hmm. and uh, and how to manage multiple tasks at one time. Right. Uh, they they really taught me about responsibility and how to take responsibility for my actions. That was one of the biggest lessons that I learned early on. Uh, it, was, it was very difficult to go through uh, those four years, but if I was 18 year old, if I could talk to my 18 year old self, I would yeah. tell him, you, know, that you, you need to make that decision and right. do it. I would do it all over again. Okay. If I got and and at West Point, was that where you kind of grew um, you know, up to uh, as a man and uh, you, Got all these skill sets. Did it transfer well into uh, when your career in the military? It absolutely um, developed me and prepared me for um, my my time as a second lieutenant in the United right. States Army. Right. So uh, I, I would say every day mm -hmm. I probably learn a little bit more about myself. That's kind of just how I like to live my life. Um, I had a, a story of if I I can tell you a little story about Please. the night before graduation. So we spent four years uh, at the United States Military Academy, and I had a roommate during the time, and, and um, it was the night before graduation. And when you're in an area, you get really close when you're in the school with all of your classmates. Sure. And one of the mottos is cooperate and graduate. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, the relationships, the, the team atmosphere, helping each other out was really, I was fortunate to have friends around me that that did that for me while we were at the academy. Right. So my, uh, my roommate the night before graduation, I asked him, I said, well, you know, are you excited? Because uh, I, I was thrilled. I couldn't even sleep. And he said, actually, I'm scared. Mm. And, I, and I asked, well, why, why are you scared, man? This is going to be the best day of our lives. Mm -hmm. We've been waiting for this day for four years. I didn't, personally, I didn't think I was ever going to make it. <laughs> and now here we are the night before graduation, the night before throwing our hats up into the air. Sure. It was just going to be great. And, uh, and he told me, he said, I've been wanting to do this my entire life. Mm -hmm. wow. Ever since he was eight years old, he wow. wanted to be a graduate of the United States Military Academy at West Point. And he said, that's been my entire goal my entire life. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to do the day after tomorrow. Wow. And so it, that was a realization to me that 
you know, I don't ever want to be in that position. Well, wow. there's, not, there's not a goal that you achieve, right. and then you don't know what's next. Yeah. But to always continue to grow and always continue to strive and kind of lean towards expansion of both uh, your, your, your knowledge base as well as uh, experiences. So that, that's what I really learned. And that was the night before graduation. Wow. That's uh, listening to my roommate. And that, I mean, that's a very good lesson. Just life all, you know, right. life general lesson that you can uh, take away from. Yeah. Um, so, you know, after uh, West Point, uh, what was your career like in the military? It was, um, I, well, it was great. Yeah. I didn't always like it. Mm -hmm. I didn't always enjoy it. Um, but it was, I started off, I had a pretty unique career. Mm -hmm. My idea going into the military was that I was going to get, after, get out after my first, uh, you, you, have, you owe back five to six years to, after graduation right. to, the, to the military. And so I went in uh, thinking that I was going to get out after five or six years. Mm -hmm. I was going to do my commitment and I was going to get out and go get an uh, MBA and go work in a Fortune 500 company. And I was an economics major at West Point. Right. And uh, so I decided, uh, based on advice from mentors. I mm -hmm. talked to five mentors before uh, graduation, and I asked them what branch in the Army does you pick, if you're the infantry or armor branch or field artillery mm -hmm. <clears throat> or aviation or, or logistics quartermaster. So four of them told me, they said, uh, well, I would, I would pick quartermaster, mm -hmm. uh, be logistics, because you're going to bring those skills and they're going to be beneficial to the uh, civilian sector when mm -hmm. you transition out of the military. And then one out of the five that will go be a signal officer and learn about communication. Mm -hmm. And so based on that advice, I just took the law of averages and said, hey, four out of five yeah. agree. So I branched a quartermaster officer. Mm. And I was going to get out. So I started my military career as a quartermaster officer and a logistician. Yeah. And, um, and then through my career, I was fortunate to meet my uh, my my wife of 20 years, who was also a classmate of mine. Oh, nice and story. so we graduated uh, together, but I knew who she was, but she didn't know who I was. Yeah, it's we, always the case that way. <laughs> right, right. And so, uh, and so she was also a quartermaster officer. Mm -hmm. So we were both at Fort uh, Lee, Virginia together in the officer basic course. And uh, so that's when we started to date and, and get to know each other. And uh, she went off to Fort Bragg mm -hmm. uh, for her first duty assignment. And I went to uh, Fort Stewart, Georgia, being a boy from Atlanta. Sure. I wanted to get back to Georgia. And when did you come to Hawaii? So I came to Hawaii in 2007. Okay. But that was after uh, I obviously decided to uh, stay in beyond five years. Yeah. My wife decided to get out. We, mm -hmm. we, uh, we started our family. And uh, we knew that both of us weren't going to stay in. And, mm -hmm. And she knew that both of us weren't going to get out. Right. And so, <laughs> so, so I stayed in. And, and uh, at that point, I made the decision to uh, go to uh, Special Forces uh, Selection mm -hmm. to uh, do something different. If I was going to spend 20 years in the military, I wanted to uh, be around. Um, not that they're not professionals across uh, the, uh, the, the entire uh, mm -hmm. U.S. Army, but I wanted to uh, do something a little bit different. I wanted to have a little different adventure. Right. So I went to Special Forces Selection and, and was lucky enough to uh, make it through and, and be selected. And uh, then went off to my uh, career as a Green Beret at uh, 3rd Special Forces Group at Fort Bragg. And then from that, after multiple deployments to Afghanistan, uh, then uh, we headed out to Hawaii. Nice. And uh, that brought us out here in 2007. Yeah, that's a very uh, you know, uh, great uh, career in the military. And um, you, Thank you, and uh, uh, you, when you retired, uh, when did you retire exactly? I retired in 2017. 2017, so it's only been a couple of years. Right, yes, yeah, yeah just two years. Just two, two years, years, yeah. This summer. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, after retiring, I mean, you've come a long ways too, and that's why we're here really talking about your business, but it's always important to kind of go back and see where you came from, you know? And it's always fascinating to me as a host to really kind of uh, understand the journey up to the point and see that transition. And talking about transition, how was that transition from the military into civilian life for you? Well, for me, I was fortunate that I had a, quite a few mentors to mm -hmm. kind of help me along the way. Um, I, I knew about a year out mm -hmm. that, uh, that the transition was going to happen. Right. So I started preparing myself a little, 
early. Right. And uh, I'm fortunate to have a, a wonderful wife and a wonderful family who uh, just kind of helped me through the whole process. I think that the strength of our family at home was really what allowed me to, um, to that, that made a, such a smooth transition. Right. One of the pieces of advice that I uh, received from a mentor that I think that, that helped tremendously was the, um, the idea of ensuring that you're able to provide for the family. Because as a military family, you have, it's pretty, uh, financially, it's, it's a safe and secure kind of, uh, uh, you, you know that the paycheck's coming in, you get used to that yeah. every two weeks. And then as you transition into the civilian sector, you, uh, you hear the stories about where the, the status of the economy and then the risks of being an entrepreneur. And, and, um, and so the, all of those thoughts and ideas, I mean, they, they start to um, um, perpetuate or just kind of float around in the household. Like, what are we going to do? How are we going to sure. do? How are we going to continue to provide for our family? And so the advice that he gave me, one of my mentors gave me, was uh, to, to start saving money, not for your retirement, but to start saving money for the transition. Right. And, uh, Very wise words, though. It, it, was, yeah. it, was, it was wonderful because what it allowed us to do was start putting away money just for the transition. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then it gave me the freedom mm -hmm. to, um, to not settle for the first opportunity that came up. Sure. I mean, having a very distinguished military career like yourself, um, retiring as a lieutenant colonel, um, you know, you probably had a lot of opportunities to, you know, find uh, employment elsewhere. Am I correct? Yes. And how hard was that decision um, to switch between employment or and uh, you know self employment? It, it, well, the financial um, situation that we put ourselves in uh, twelve months before retirement uh, gave me that uh, it helped me mitigate that risk. Right. So it allowed us to kind of sit and wait for either the right opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, and then in parallel, while waiting for the right opportunity, start to build something and grow uh, the seed of a, a entrepreneurship or, or the idea of a business and try to get that going. Very cool. Yeah. Um, yes, I don't want to cut you off, but uh, we're going to take a short break and then uh, we'll be back in a, in a minute. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha, I'm Stan Osterman, a host here on ThinkTech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness here on the island. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Mahalo. All right, welcome back to Adventures in Small Business. We have uh, Mr. James Alden here from Long Gray Line. Uh, Jamie, uh, James, uh, we're going to just jump right in, and maybe we can talk about a little bit about uh, that transition and why you chose to go into the specific industry that you chose. Okay. I, um, well, because I was an economics major at West Point, and mm -hmm. my idea was that I was going to get out after five years and get my MBA, I still had that dream in the back of my head. So... And that, after my 20-year career in the military, I, that, that dream didn't go away. I still wanted to con maybe get an MBA, go become a uh, middle manager in the Fortune 500 company and work my way up and uh, maybe get into the tech industry or something new and something unique and just challenge myself in that way. Uh, I had a, growing up in Atlanta, uh, familiar with the Waffle House restaurant. Sure. So, um, and, uh, and so I was at a, I had one of those Waffle Houses one day with my, uh, my father. And my father-in-law actually was uh, in there with me, and he was a key mentor as I transitioned out. And, and, um, and I was telling him this story. He asked me, you know, what, what do you want to do? What do you plan on doing? And I was telling him this idea of getting my MBA and going to 
work for a Fortune 500 company and work my way up. And, and, uh, and he knew that his daughter wanted to stay in Hawaii. Mm. He said, well, how are you going to do that uh, from the middle of the Pacific Ocean? How many Fortune 500 companies are out there would be willing to bring you on board and not to their corporate headquarters? And, uh, and then, uh, so I, but, I, but I kind of shrugged off that comment and continued to explain my reasoning and how, how great it's going to be and, and how I'm going to shake the dust of the military off of my boots and I was going to move out and do, uh, do some great things in the business world. And uh, he continued to listen patiently and finish his breakfast and his cup of coffee. And then he, he, he asked me one question. He said, really, one word. He, why? And I, I sat back. And said, why, why is that your plan? And then he went on to tell me about my 24 years in the military, including my four years at West Point, and the relationships that I built and the experiences that I gained and, um, and the deployments that I've been on and the relationships really that I built across the Pacific region because I've been out in the Pacific since 2007. So 10 years at this time, half of my career working in the Pacific and all the relationships that I had built from India to Japan and, and that network of, of friendships, relationships, acquaintances, and the time that I put in and the, and the knowledge base that I had built. And he, he just asked me, he said, why, why don't you leverage that? Mm -hmm. All of the business stuff is that he said, all the business ideas and concepts and, and uh, growth and excitement is going to be out there. It's not going to go anywhere. Why don't you transition into something that you already know so you're not starting over? Right. Every time in your military career you get to a new rank, you get to a new unit, you, you start over. You have to prove yourself again. Right. He said, you've proven yourself for 24 years. Why not use those relationships um, the best, the best way I, you can? I think that's a, that was great advice. And because, you know, working with veteran, uh, veteran entrepreneurs myself, uh, I see a lot of veterans that are transitioning out totally change the course of what they did in the military and go into totally different uh, kind of industries. You know, they might have been an officer or they might have been enlisted, whatever they choose. A lot of them choose to go into food and beverage, lifestyle businesses, you know, poor companies, construction, a very different from their career in the military. And you're one of the few actually actually stays kind of on course, not exactly the same, but still utilizing all the resources that you gained throughout the years in the military service, in your military service, and using that to your advantage. Um, so that's kind of uh, going into uh, your company, Long Gray Line. And uh, right. maybe you can tell uh, the audience a little bit about your company, what it does, uh, you know, how it started. Right, how sure. It's a uh, training and education company that, uh, that really leverages the relationships that we have out in the Pacific region uh, to provide services for, um, for different universities and different uh, education entities. Uh, so, it, growing up in a family with an educator, mm -hmm. you really learn the value of education and the value of, of expanding your knowledge base. And so I've always enjoyed teaching, um, mentoring, uh, uh, and watching people grow and change and think of something new. Right. My, the biggest joy that I receive is when someone here's an idea or a concept and says, oh, I, I really didn't think about it that way. Yeah. And so, uh, so that's what I wanted to do. I wanted, so I, in spe as special forces uh, officer and our special forces mission, I mean, that, that's what we do. We go into foreign countries, we learn the language, we learn the culture, and we help train them and support them in accomplishing their objectives. Um, so, so being, having a career within that, unit in that organization and doing that around the world uh, it just kind of it helps um it, it helps uh not really helps but it it, it was just, a very easy transition yes for you. yeah it helped it helped in the transition yeah for me to go from that um, mindset and that uh, focus and 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 then take it into a training and education company that um that's that helps solve problems so that, that was another big piece of advice yeah. was um, not to look at the product mm -hmm. that you want to provide, but look at the problems that you want to solve. Right. And, right. yeah, and, and find those solutions and be a problem solver. Mm -hmm. And so being in the military, 
you see a lot of problem mm -hmm. and that you want to solve. And so depending on your position, authority, responsibilities, you give recommendations or you make decisions on how to solve those problems. So, right. And so you, so during my transition, I just took all of those skills and attributes that I developed over the military my time in the military and said, okay, what are the problems out there? And, uh, and one of the problems that we're trying to solve is uh, training and education right. and getting a, 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 helping a partner get to where they want to, where, where be. And, um, and it's very uh, rewarding. Uh, so like, uh, you know, Long Gray Line has been maybe, it's a very young company, a year, maybe yeah, two years? Months, 18 two months. 18 months, yeah, yeah, you had your first full year right. recently yes. and, uh, you know, very surprising enough, I mean, you're doing very well, uh, you know, uh, profitable, which is very, very hard to do in the first year for a lot of small businesses. But uh, where do you see Long Gray Line in five years? I mean, where do you want to be? I mean, do you still want to concentrate just on the Pacific or do you want to have more a, of, a, kind of a global presence? Well, that's uh, where I want to be in five years. Uh, I've thought about that a lot. Mm -hmm. And what I keep coming back to is I want to be happy yeah. in five years. I, I, want to, I want to maintain my time. So to me, that's a limiting factor. Is I retired so I could make breakfast for my sons, so I could make lunch for my sons, so I could make dinner for my family at night, so I could take the kids to school. Uh, being an entrepreneur allows me that flexibility and that time, but it also gives me the create creative outlet. And, um, and I see Long Gray Line being uh, uh, still w existing, still providing training and education opportunities for partners in the Pacific. Maybe uh, we, we become a, a pretty significant subcontractor or uh, prime contractors out uh, in the Pacific. Maybe we venture into uh, commercial uh, training and education. Uh, but it's all going to be tempered with uh, my family time, mm -hmm. my time, um, and, and kind of getting that, maintaining the balance sure. that for so long was very difficult to maintain. And now right. having that freedom is really, uh, is really what my focus is. So it's, it, I'll take it moment by moment yep. and, uh, and just try to make the, the appropriate decision in every moment that presents itself. Yeah, I mean, that's a great, uh, you know, that's a great way to look at things. Um, you know, success, uh, you know, is a double-edged sword because, you know, you do have uh, time allocations and what's important to you. And your vision of success is not only the thriving of your business, but, you know, your personal life, uh, which, you know, heavily involves your kids and your wife. Nice mm -hmm. to hear. Um, you know, we're almost out of time, but, you know, I want one more question I kind of want to ask you is, you know, being a career uh, officer in the Army, um, just, uh, you know, do you have any advisement, you know, words of advice for um, people that are, are um, service members coming out of the military, um, transitioning and thinking about starting a small business? I mean, what, uh, what kind of words of advice uh, do you have? Mm. Well, I would, I would first tell them to, uh, I would advise them to find the mentor. Find somebody that's been there, mm -hmm. uh, that's been where they want to go, and, uh, and build a, don't just call them and try to build a relationship with them. Build, try to build a friendship with them mm -hmm. as much as, as, as you can. And build that network and begin with people that, that you know. Right. Uh, and then go from there. Yeah. And because they're going to introduce you and tell them what your dreams, tell them what you're thinking about. And don't, don't ever turn down a coffee or a lunch because you don't think that that person has something to, uh, to provide you. Um, and and I, would, I would also recommend that they don't go looking for jobs. Mm -hmm. I had a mentor tell me, he said, don't go looking for a job because you will get advice. Mm -hmm. said, go looking for advice and you will get a job. Very cool. And so that was really great advice and it changed it changed my perspective on how I talked with uh, possible bosses or opportunities or business to business opportunities. It changed my entire uh, approach. Right. I would also recommend that um, they get out of their comfort zone. That it's, it's okay. 
you want to dream um, uh, big, but get out of your comfort zone, surround yourself with different uh, the people that are maybe in the industry that you're interested in going in, and try it out. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to jump in with, with both feet. And you can, you can try it out, have a, start a part-time business, have a full-time job, and start a part-time business. And um, because for me, see, Long Gray Lines has part-time. Mm -hmm. So we have multiple part-time partners. I'm not full-time on anything. So that allows a lot of flexibility and allows for, for it maximizes our, our creativity yeah. of how we want to solve those problems. Very cool. So I would, I would just say that. Find a mentor yeah. and uh, get out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. Maybe lean into different experiences. And, um, and uh, that, you know, that, that's the advice that I would, I would yeah. give to those. Very good advice. Uh, I also forgot to say that actually uh, uh, James is a Boots to Business graduate, which right. is our core program. And, uh, you know, he's taking the course, and now he's actually a mentor in our I've program. I've taken it twice. You've taken it twice. Yes. I forgot, yeah, you took it twice. And, yeah. uh, you know, the experiences that you had from Boots to Business, uh, you gained a lot, you started a business, and we invited James back as a mentor for our program, which has worked right. out really well. Uh, he comes to our classes in the military installations, and he teaches uh, Boots to Business workshops uh, along with our program. So and I great. really want to thank you for being a mentor in our program. And, uh, we hope that relationship continues, and yeah. uh, maybe you, you know, in a couple of years, you can come back on the show and uh, tell us about your uh, new adventures. Uh, yeah, I, I would, I would love to. Thank you for having me, sure. and, and thank you for accepting me in the Boost to Business team. It's, yeah. it's a thrill for me to to go and just talk with transitioning military, yeah. and uh, to let them know that it's not as daunting a task, right. and and don't settle for the first thing that comes comes along. You yeah. have a lot of strengths that you bring to the table, and yeah. you're 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 a you're a highly valued commodity right. uh, in the in the civilian sector, so I give them that confidence. Yeah, they, they it's, and it it's too. worked out really well. And thank yeah. you for that. And uh, thank you for joining us to on uh, adventures in small business. Uh, my name is Dennis Kwok, uh, and thank you, Jamie, for coming on the show. My pleasure. Thank you for having Aloha. me. Aloha.